Hi everyone, we are going to discuss today integration by parts and focus on one specific case which is called the boomerang integral. Reminder of how the integration by parts formula works, we have an integral as being f times g prime. As we saw previously, uh, you will have to make the choice of who plays the role of f and who plays the role of g prime. And what we hope for is that when this integral is replaced by the right hand side, f times g minus the integral of f prime times g, we will be handling something simpler. How do we choose the f and the g prime from the onset? We have a certain hierarchy list. And we said that inverse trig functions or logarithms will come first. Polynomials and algebraic functions will come last. And I've put a box around trig and exponential functions because these are the cases that will cause the boomerang integrals. For instance, here we're going to look at how we're going to solve this combination of an exponential and a trig function. Neither one is higher than the other in the hierarchy list. We have no logarithms, no arctans, no arcsines, no polynomials. And therefore, what we will choose as f and g prime is not that relevant. Now, what I've selected is e to the 2x as the f and g prime. First of all, because that's the order in which they appeared in the original integral but also because differentiating f will involve the chain rule, which might be a little bit simpler than anti-differentiating e to the 2x, which would require a bit of a substitution. So once we've made the choice to let f represent, be represented by e to the 2x, we will need to find for it its corresponding term f prime, and you notice 2e to the 2x is the result of this derivative, with the constant 2 being the result of a chain rule. If g prime is cos of x, then its antiderivative g is sine of x. And here's what we get once we apply these different terms to the integration by parts formula. f is e to the 2x and g sine of x. And then we have a new integral which is the product of f prime 2e to the 2x times g, which is sine of x. I've highlighted in red this new integral because it is still the product of a trig function and of an exponential. And therefore, it looks like we're going to have to in apply integration by parts again. Now, who do we choose as f and as g prime? Well, I stuck with what I had made as a choice earlier. So my exponential function was my previous f. So I've gone with 2e to the 2x as playing the role of f, and the remaining term, sine of x, as being g prime. A second chain rule on uh, e to the 2x now will give us an f prime of 4e to the 2x, and anti-differentiating sine will result in giving us minus cos of x. Here's what we get. I've put brackets as I've done in previous videos because the integral that was highlighted in red at the top of your screen was being subtracted and therefore we do have to subtract what it has converted into. Within the integral, also, sorry, within the brackets still in red, I have the different terms f times g and f prime times g from our second integration by parts. Now before signs start getting out of hand, I've chosen to distribute them to the two terms within the brackets. I've switched colors a little bit. Um, at the, uh, in the last row, we noticed that a new integral has appeared once again. We're integrating 4e to the 2x and cos of x. And what's a little bit discouraging about seeing this integral is that it is the exact one we started off with, aside from the constant factor 4. So you've probably understood by now why 
I've decided to call this a boomerang integral because what you tried to get rid of from the start has come back to hit you behind the head. So we are, it looks like we are wasting our time. But actually, having a repeated term is what we want because I can actually move it to the left hand side and add it to the original integral I was trying to solve. These are actually like terms, and because we have one integral of e to the 2x cos x that we're adding to four more of these same integrals, then we can collect them and say there are five of these integrals of e to the 2x cos of x. As for the right-hand side, none of the terms need be integrated. They are already strict antiderivatives. And if we divide by 5, here we are. We have isolated the integral that we were starting off with. As usual, I've added a plus k for uh, the general, to find the general antiderivatives of the expression we started off with. And I think we've won this battle again.